<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Kim Folk Farm. I'm Shane. Today's video is going to be about quail, kind of a from egg to freezer type video. So stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you guys checking us out. I really do. Uh, today's video, I want to talk about quail and our experience we had with raising our quail this uh, past season. We decided to get quail this uh, past spring. Uh, we bought the eggs. I'm going to tell you exactly how we do it. This is not a video that is exactly how you raise quail because this is our very first time raising them. Uh, but I just want to tell you guys our experience, how we did it, and showing that you guys can do it too. Okay, first off, you need a place to put your birds. Uh, a lot of people put them in these little uh, upright cages, like a little rabbit type cage or some sort of little cage like that. We happen to have these uh, little chicken tractors where we we're raising all our meat chickens in. So it worked out great for us. We got to put them on ground. We just added some waterers and uh, some feeders. I'll show you all that. But I would say the first step is you need a place to put your birds. Okay, I think the next step would be, <laughs> you need to get some birds. Uh, nowadays you have Craigslist, we're Craigslist uh, fools, we buy everything on Craigslist. But uh, you get to eggs, if you have an incubator, you can incubate your own eggs, or you can uh, look around and, and Google uh, quail, get you some quail online. Uh, I'm not sure if they ship them or not, but uh, as far as the eggs, I think you can get them shipped to you. We were very fortunate, we looked on Craigslist and there was a lady 10 miles from us that sold them uh, on her little farm. So we just went and picked up some eggs, uh, incubate them, and we started this first batch of quail. So I would think the next step is to get you some birds. All right, I wanna show you guys our feeders too. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the feed and our feeders and waters. And now I don't wanna take credit <laughs> for these feeders and waters. I am so addicted to keeping it Dutch. I absolutely <laughs> love that, that guy. Uh, Y'all not watching Keeping It Dutch, you're crazy. That guy is awesome. Uh, that and Slightly Redneck, I like him. But I, I got these feeders and water ideas uh, from Keeping It Dutch. So check these out. If you haven't been uh, watching our channel, they're just three inch PVC pipe. I don't even glue them together. Just in case something happens, I need to clean them out or something. I can just bang them apart. Uh, we just zip tie them to the wall. And the waters, you get these little cups. You can get them from Amazon or Track Supply. They just work great. Believe it or not, they get him peck at them. They get plenty of water. They work great. Now, I do glue that or they'll leak. But I got this idea from keeping it Dutch. It keeps everything we, we, uh, off the wall. Uh, oh, my goodness. It keeps everything up against the wall and off the floor because they just make a mess in the feed and water. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the feed. Uh, when you feed your birds, you want to feed them a super high-protein game bird feed. <laughs> a game bird feed now when they're little chicks i'll show you some chicks we just had some chicks hatch out uh two days ago when you have chicks you have to get a game bird starter uh high and it'll be a high protein uh we feed our birds uh, these little quail here we feed them a 28 percent uh, game bird feed and they just lay eggs like crazy i've watched a lot of youtube channels that uh complain they don't get eggs uh i don't know if it's because of sunlight or, or what but I've always heard that you have to feed them a high protein uh, feed to get them to lay eggs and these girls right here have not stopped they lay nine or ten or eight or nine every day every single day all right another thing I want to talk about is if you're wanting to breed your birds to get fertilized eggs in order to hatch uh, you need to get your male to female ratio just right uh, you, you basically want it four to five females for every male. Uh, you thin out, once you get a, a huge flock of birds, you, you wing out or uh, thin out, <laughs> you thin out most of your males, but try to keep one uh, male for every four to five females. And here we have it a little high. I have uh, 11 females and five males. So today we'll probably be culling out one or two uh, males out of here. Uh, so there will be some processing in this video. All right, well, some interesting little facts <laughs> that we've noticed is uh, chickens lay their eggs in the morning and the quail lay theirs in the evening. It's really neat. You come out here in the evening, or you come out here in the morning and check, there's no eggs, but you come in the evening and uh, you'll find tons of eggs. But something else we, uh, we found out is uh, you have to have around 14 hours of daylight or 14 hours of light for your quail to lay eggs. 
and it's kind of funny we we sort of got an experiment going that we really didn't know we were we were doing these birds are laying eggs every day and these are not they should be these guys here these this is the pen i'm going to be calling out some males out of today but they're not laying eggs and our thinking is i don't know if you can see that there's a street light right there that we have out here and it shines right into this pen at night but this tree blocks this one when we come out here at night this pen is lit up like the sun and this one is completely dark and so <laughs> i think that's kind of interesting that these guys are laying and these guys are not because they sh they should be way past laying and i'm thinking it's going to be for that street light and we'll let you know later on other videos as we come into winter if these guys are laying in the winter it's going to be no doubt it's because of that street light okay like i said earlier there's going to be processing in the video because i have a bunch of males that need to be culled out of this pen i need to thin it down um, but i just want to tell you guys the meat from the quail are absolutely phenomenal uh, it's mostly a breast with legs the legs taste fantastic to me it tastes like a turkey uh, super super uh, delicious meat and the eggs are phenomenal we boil all our eggs uh, for the fact that it's just easier to peel it seems like when you scramble them and stuff you get little shards of egg uh, shell and everything but uh, we boil the eggs are fantastic to me everything about quail is <laughs> delicious <laughs> Okay, what we use to incubate our eggs is this hover baiter. I know I got it upside down, but this incubator is fantastic. Uh, we've had this thing for a few years. We've incubated tons of chickens, uh, tons of quail. We did a bunch of guineas one time. We've just incubated tons of stuff in this thing. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive, um, 100 bucks maybe. Uh, we got on Amazon. The hover baiter is a great incubator, and there's just tons of them out there. But we've just incubated... 40 uh, little baby quail just hatched out about two days ago two maybe three days ago it smells like a week ago but they're just they're just so cute they're just absolutely ridiculously cute <laughs> but we're going to take these guys out and put them in the brooder house here shortly um, because they use the bathroom they just poop like crazy so we need to get them outside they really get your house smelling right uh, i think they've only been here i think today's day three but they need to go outside they grow super fast they fed her out in i, I want to say two weeks um, but if you're interested in, in raising quail it's a super fast bird they uh eight weeks they're full grown they should be crowing in eight weeks the males uh, they should be laying eggs in eight weeks and, and if you want to process them, uh, they're ready to go. In eight weeks, they're fully mature. All right, we're super fortunate. We're in our backyard. Uh, we were super fortunate when we bought the place. This thing was already here. And we, I don't know what, some sort of shed or, or, or not. I know when we come look at the house, they had a dog in it. But we turned it into a brooder house. It just works fantastic. Uh, we hang heat lamps in here. And we have this thing here. It's from comfortchicks.com. You can go look that up. This thing's amazing. It heat, it's got a heating pad underneath it, and those little yellow legs are adjustable. You raise it up and down to the growth of the chicks. As they grow, you can raise it up. It's just a, an awesome little thing to have in your brooder house. It gets super, super warm, uh, and we like it a lot better than these heat lamps. You ain't got to worry about nothing catching fire. I worry to death about these things uh, coming down. I only have one clamp right now. I'm fixing to go in the house and, and double clamp it. I like to have a nail up there, something to strap it to because it really really worries me if that thing wants to give but that's from comfortchicks.com uh super super cool little tool to have in your brooder house we're gonna let these guys go in here get some food and water and get these guys comfortable
well, everybody. The chicks are doing fantastic. It all huddled. There's a bunch huddled under there because this finally warmed up. And there's some hanging out here. Uh, they haven't started eating yet, but they will. They'll start eating. They're used to that little uh, feeder we gave them. But uh, we're down to 38. We lost two. I noticed there was two that passed away in the bucket uh, before, when I was emptying them out. But anybody knows about farming, you know you're going to lose some animals here and there. But uh, so far, they're looking great. We'll go get some more water and put out here. And then we're going to process some birds. Uh, I'm not going to show the dispatching of it. It's, it's pretty basic. Uh, but I want to show you how we process these things. And just for anybody that's worrying how hard is it to process a quail, super simple. Super simple. Uh, my grandson could probably do it. <laughs> he did the last batch with me. So stick around. We're going to go process some birds. First thing you need uh, to do this. Is a pair of scissors. That's, I think that's the only tool you need. Uh, you need a cooler. Put your meat in. You need a catch box or uh, something to, you know, put your birds in as you cull them out. Uh, the ones that you want to process, you put in here. And two buckets. One to put your feathers and uh, innards and all that in, and one to sit on. So, what we're going to do is I just sit here and sort of watch them and normally they crow i haven't been hearing these birds crow whatsoever and they're way past due to start crowing they're just huge birds but you can kind of tell by the breasts on them see like whoops that guy right there is a male that guy's a male and she's probably the female she's probably female they'll have a speckled chest he'll have a copper color chest I hope y'all can see that. Yeah, see, that's a female right there. And what we do is we pull out all the males and put them in this box. I put them in this box, and then I can determine how many females I have. And I can determine how many males I need to put back with the females to sort of get that four to five, uh, four, five to one ratio. Uh, I did take one of the males out of the other pen. Uh, for the fact that I, I think I had too many males over there. They're just pulling all the feathers uh, out of the top of the heads of the birds. And let me explain the reason we, uh, you want that four to five because the males are very aggressive. Uh, they'll fight uh, with each other like crazy when you have too many males in there. So you want to sort of thin the males out to where they're not fighting and also thin them out to where they're not beating up the females uh, too bad. Uh, we noticed our females over there are starting to get... Uh, not bald, but they're getting the feathers pulled out of the top of the head. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about I forgot to mention on the incubator is when you're incubating your eggs, you want to keep it, keep your incubator at 100 degrees. And we try to keep our humidity around 50 to 60 percent. And we check our incubator every day to make sure nothing's happening. And in 16 days, your birds should be hatching. And uh, we usually let the hatch go on for about three days because sometimes you'll have some later birds hatch uh, so uh, you cut your cut your turner off at 14 days and then on the day 16 your eggs should be hatching but let's let's uh, sort of start looking through here and culling uh, this guy right here was trying to make a little noise <laughs> let's uh, sit here a minute and cull some of these birds out see how many uh, males we come up with and let's see well, that didn't turn out like I expected. We got a lot of females. I mean, a ton of females. The last batch uh, we did over here in the pen next door, the males just way overwhelmed the females. There's like 16 uh, males in there. This batch had 20 females and just a few males. Uh, I actually put four males in here with uh, 20 females. I got 20 females and four males. And I got two four six only seven but only seven birds to process and uh two of them was from the next door uh, pen one was a, a hen that's been injured and we've been watching her for a while uh, she's got a bad leg it never recoups so we're going to go ahead and process her and one was an extra male we had over there so this pen ought to be laying a ton of eggs next spring but like i say you can see how well it's shaded with that big tree uh <laughs> i don't know if they're gonna be laying much at all until next year but me and my nephew are actually going to plan on cutting all these trees out we got them i don't they're, they're so old and they're and half of them are just starting to die i don't know if they've gotten too tight but 
but that's another video. Uh, stick around, I'm gonna show you guys how we process these real quick. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our quail, and I'm not gonna show the dispatcher, but what we do is just cut, uh, cut the head off. Uh, it's the most humane, quickest way that we've known to do it, so uh, stick around, I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, once your bird is dispatched, it's as simple as taking a wing. Uh, we cut the wing off, cut the other wing off. We cut the feet off at the knees. And then you just find the breast you take the breast and just give it a tug. Just give it a tug. We're not trying to feather, uh, take the feathers out. We're trying to skin it. So if you'll take the, the skin and just pull it over like so. The next, the next thing you do is right. That's the uh, right down the. The next thing you do, <laughs> the next thing you do is go right inside. There's the chest. You will go right down the spine and just cut all the way to the tail. Cut all that, and then go down the other side of the spine. Cut that. Pull that spine out and pull all the innards out. And inside there'll be a little bit of lungs right here inside the rib cage. You want to pull that out. Make sure you check inside your ribs. There'll be some lungs in there. And as simple as that. Now right here on the tail, you may want to snip off that little tail section right there. Snip that off. But other than that, that's it wash it off get these little feathers off but that's what you end up with all right well that's what you end up with a nice beautiful breast uh and if you ask me these legs <laughs> taste better than the breast we were having a fit over the legs they're they're just a delicious bird uh, well, all right. It's simple as that. Uh, the processing is really simple. The eggs are fantastic. The meat's fantastic. Look, guys, if you have neighbors and you want a bird that is super quiet where you can get eggs and if you want to get meat, you can get some meat. Look, quail are the way to go. We absolutely love them. I wished I would have done this years ago. Um, if I left anything out, just ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, remember, guys, I'm not a professional at this. <laughs> By no means. This is just us, uh, what I've learned from spring to now. Uh, and I just want to tell you guys, it's so super simple. Uh, you could probably uh, find out how to get you some birds. Uh, you can get them at maybe an animal auction, you know. Uh, but find out how to get you some birds or get you some eggs and incubate them, hatch them out. Super, super simple. Check them out. They're just running around everywhere. I may have to take some of these out and put them in the other pen. There's so many in this pen. There's 20 females. But uh, guys, do us a favor. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We'd really, really appreciate it. We love you guys to death. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Share this with a friend. Talk to your neighbors about getting some quail. Y'all go in half on some quail. Uh, if you have a homestead, get some quail. We absolutely love them. Guys, appreciate it again. We love y'all to death, and we will see y'all on the next video.